Power Query Editor is a super powerful data preparation tool and it is part of the Power BI desktop. The Power Query Editor enables us to extract, transform, and load data for analysis and visualization. And this is why it is also referred to as an ETL tool. If you want to become an expert in Power BI, then the first thing you should master is data preparation using Power Query Editor. And in this journey, the first step is to familiarize yourself with the user interface of Power Query Editor and learn what is located where inside the Power Query Editor window. And that's exactly what I'll be explaining in this video. Hi, my name is Gurpreet and my mission is to train and empower people like you with life-changing data skills. So we know that Power Query Editor is part of Power BI Desktop, but it is not available in the main Power BI Desktop window. So how do we access it and how do we launch it? So there are three ways to do that. And to learn that, let's jump onto the computer. So here I have a new Power BI file open and at the moment it doesn't have any data inside it. So when you want to launch Power Query Editor in a report like this, then the best way is to start with get data. If you already know what sort of data source you're connecting to, so the common data sources are available here, or you can launch, uh, click on more and launch the get data dialog box. So get data allows you to connect to a data source and then you launch Power Query Editor. So that's one way of doing it. So let's say if I want to connect to a CSV file, just click here, come and open a CSV file and it shows you a preview and I'm just going to click transform data and when I click transform data that launches the Power Query Editor. So this is one way of doing it and I'm just going to click close and apply here for now. Now we have some data in our file so I can see here we have some data the, the query here. Now once you have that then you can actually come here to the on the home tab to this query section and you can click on transform data and that also launches Power Query Editor. And notice that how Power Query Editor is sort of available in its own window. So it's like a separate window. So desktop, main desktop is there. This is separate window. So it's not part of the main desktop as such. It's it's almost like a, another app inside it. It launches in its own window. So I'll, I'll keep it maximized just to get more viewing area here. So that's another way of doing it through the transform data option. So I'm just gonna close this again and Another way to do it is if you already have data, then you can click on, so on the right hand side here, you can right click here and say edit query, and that also opens the Power Query Editor. So there are multiple ways of launching it. If you are uh, opening a new report and you don't have any data, then you have to go through get data option. There is an option to launch without data as well, where you can go and click transform data from here even when you don't have data but obviously then you have to get data in the power query editor so suppose this didn't exist uh, so if I come here and delete this from the model and I click transform data so that also launches the power query editor obviously there are no queries at the moment and then you have to go and here fetch the source so you always need to bring in some data before you start working within power query editor or launch power query editor and then connect to a data source because without data there's no like you can't really use the functionality inside it power query editor is there to help you prepare data transform it reshape it so that's why you first need some data inside it those are some of the ways that you launch Power Query Editor. Next, we will learn about the user interface and familiarize ourselves with the different parts of the user interface of Power Query Editor window. So this is the Power Query Editor window. And let's now learn about the interface and different parts of the Power Query Editor. The Power Query Editor user for interface consists of seven key parts. So number one at the top here, this one, this is called the ribbon and it consists of these seven different tabs. Next, on the left hand side here, we have the queries pane, okay? Next, we have this in the middle, this main part. This is called the preview grid or the data pane. And now on the right hand side here, we have the query settings pane, which contains the properties and applied steps. And just above the data pane here, we have here is the 
uh, formula bar and also there are two more sections so one here is right at the bottom this bar here is called the status bar also there is a context sensitive display pane here just under the main data pane and if you click on a cell then it shows this and if i click here then it shows this so we will learn all about all these different parts now so one by one so number one as i said is the power query editor uh, ribbon which sits here right at the top and if you have used any of the microsoft office applications then you should already be familiar with the concept of ribbon the query editor ribbon it consists of seven tabs and the different data transformation options available within Power Query are arranged under these seven tabs. And these tabs are called File, Home, Transform, Add Column, View, Tools, and Help. All these tabs have lots and lots of functionality hidden inside them. And I'm sure you want to learn all about it. So don't worry. I will cover each and every tab in detail and the functionality available under each of them in the next video. So if you have not already subscribed to this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified as soon as I upload the next video. Okay, so that's the ribbon. So next, let's learn about this key functionality here. We can hide this ribbon. We don't always need to have this whole ribbon visible. And this allows, this gives us a bit more working area. So if, if you see here on the right hand side, top right hand side, you can click on this up arrow there and it hides the ribbon and when that happens you can still see the tab names here and if you click on the tab then the tab opens and you still have access to the functionality if you click again on it it hides so this uh, i think this is a good way of working because it gives you more uh, working area available to you all the time okay another way we can show and hide the ribbon is at the using this quick access uh, toolbar here which is here at the top left hand side if you click on this here you can minimize so if i uncheck now it shows it and i can click and minimize so it hides it so that's another way of hiding and showing another and third way is you can click anywhere on any of these tabs right right click it and then minimize so that also does the same thing so there are a few different ways to hide and show the ribbon next is the queries pane which is here on the left hand side and this queries pane it consists of, it basically lists all the queries, all the tables, parameters, custom functions. And using this pane, we can actually rename, duplicate, reference, and also navigate between different queries. So if you just see here, if I um, cl right click here, then you can create a new query, new parameter, new group. So you can group your queries under different fold, almost like a folder. And also if you right click on a query, then it has its own context menu. and then you here you can uh, delete you can rename you can enable load and we can learn all the things about this as we go along in this power bi masterclass and i'll make sure you know each and everything about this queries pane okay so that's the queries pane number three is the query setting so this one query settings pane it contains the properties so it contains the name of the query so we can change the name of the query here so bike shared data and if I when I just say I want to remove the space I can remove so whatever you know you can just change the name of the query here also it contains this all applied steps so this is a really really powerful functionality available inside power query where each and every transformation that you apply gets recorded in the form of an applied step and this applied step section contains all those steps in chronological order you can delete steps you can there's so many things you can do so there will be a whole video dedicated again to understanding this applied steps and how it works and how to make the best use of it what are the best practices when working with applied steps and what are the best practices you should keep in mind when you are working with transformations inside power query editor okay so that's the query settings. Um, you can actually close this also to create more space. And if you go here to the view tab, then you can click on query settings button here and it shows it again. So you can hide it basically if you want to. Similarly, the queries uh, pane also, you don't always need it visible. So again, there is a minimized uh, arrow here on the left hand side, so you can hide and show that. And again, it gives you more space, more working area here for your data, okay? So that's that. 
Now the middle part, this is the data pane and this is where all the main data set. So when a query is selected, it shows the, the various columns and rows inside it. And just keep in mind that at the moment when we actually query the data and it, we are working inside the Power Query Editor, we are not actually seeing all of the data. It only shows thousand rows. So at the moment you can see here, it's showing thousand distinct values, thousand unique values. So this rider ID. So there are thousand rows of data available here. Uh, then also there is uh, sort of you can click on each cell it does look like an excel sheet but you can't really edit individual cells here so you can't really change these values directly by double clicking or anything like that so it doesn't allow you to do that okay that's important for maintaining the integrity of the data so this is the data grid there is a whole bunch of uh, context menu available so when you right click on a column there are a lot of options available to you when you right click on a cell there are different types of options available to you when you right click here different types of options available to you so there are these context sensitive menus available a lot of things which you can do using the functionalities in the ribbon you can do those some of those things here as well also here you might be seeing this and you may not see this at your end this i have enabled here in the view menu using the column quality, column distribution, column profile, those things. So I can uncheck that. So by default, you might see something like this. Um, and we will learn again all about this column, all these properties, all these functionalities in the very next video. Okay, uh, I'm just going to enable the column profile for now quickly. Okay, the next is here, just underneath the data pane here, we have this window here where if you click on a cell, it shows you the value of the cell. If you click on a row, it shows you all the values in the row for each of the column with the column name in there. And if you click a column, then it shows you the column profile. So it shows you the column stats, like the count, how many values are there, if there are any errors, any empty cells in there, how many distinct and unique values are there, what's the minimum, what's the maximum, and if there's any empty strings. And also it shows you a value distribution. So how many times each value happens. So file ID, obviously rider ID, this is like a unique one. So every value is unique. Whereas if you click on here, like bike type, you can see there are three distinct values and classic bike has the highest frequency, 713 out of 1000. And then next one is the electric bike and doctor. So this is a good way of familiarizing yourself with the data, what sort of data there is, uh, especially with the categorical variable. So like rider type also, I can quickly see their member and casual. So more members than casual riders there, so on and so forth. So this is a really, really powerful place to preview your data and understand a bit more about it. And just underneath this, this footer bar here, this one is called the status bar. And again, this one is also like an information area. We don't really change anything here. And it shows you how many columns are there in this query and how many rows are there. So 10 columns in total, 999 plus rows, so it's 1000 rows in there. And it's column profiling is based on 1000 rows. As I said, we're not seeing the whole data. It's only the first 1000 rows. So that's the status bar. So nine key sections or parts of the Power Query Editor. We have the ribbon at the top and by default it's always open to the home tab next we have the queries pane on the left here after that we have the data pane right in the middle and just above it is the formula bar on the right hand side we have the query settings pane which contains the properties and the applied steps and just below the data pane we have here this preview section where you can see depending on what you select. So if you select a cell, whether you select a row or whether you select a column, it shows you values or data accordingly. And last but not the least, right at the bottom, we have the status bar here. Okay, so those are the seven key parts of the Power Query Editor. So now you should be familiar with the seven key parts of the Power Query Editor window. In the next video, I will go in detail through each of the tabs, each of the seven tabs in the Power Query Editor window ribbon and the functionality available within each tab. So until that time, keep on learning. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up. And also, if you have any questions regarding what I covered in this video, do leave a comment and I will see you next time.